We're going to look at a couple more examples of basically condensing logarithms. So these will get a little bit more difficult, but not too bad. You guys can handle it. So as you can see, uh, right now we have two logarithms, and in our answer we're just going to end up with one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coefficients and rewrite them as exponents. So x to the 1 half power, and then here we'll get log of x minus 1 to the fourth. So that's good. I rewrote, I used the, pro, the power rule and basically took the coefficients and wrote them as exponents. Now I'm going to condense my logarithms. So now I'm going to go from having two logarithms to just having one. I do know that x to the one-half power is basically the square root of x. And then uh, since both of these have a positive coefficient, they're going to end up in the numerator. So I'm going to end up with x plus one to the fourth and then times the square root of x. So those things will be multiplied together. So just make sure that you understand that. I guess you can put a time symbol if that feels better. If you are going to put a time symbol, you probably should go ahead and put a nice little parentheses around the whole thing. Let's look at another example. This one's a little bit more complicated, but don't, don't worry about it. It just looks more difficult. Uh, we're basically going to use order of operations. So what we're going to do is what's inside the parentheses first. So again, I'm going to take all of the coefficients and write them as exponents only have one coefficient, so we'll say natural log of x plus 5 raised to the second power minus the natural log of x minus the natural log of x squared minus 4. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to condense our logarithms. So inside our parentheses we have three logarithms and we just want one. So what I'll do is I'll say the natural log. Uh, this has a positive coefficient so it's going to end up in the numerator this has a negative coefficient, so it'll end up in the denominator. And this also has a negative coefficient, so it will end up in the denominator. Now, one of the most common mistakes on problems like these is to come down and write a logarithm for the bottom and for the top. Well, you guys are smart enough. Don't do that. We know we only want one logarithm. So it's going to be the logarithm of all this stuff right here. All that stuff right there. And then now what we can do is we can take this nice little uh, coefficient and write it as the exponent of the logarithm. And again, it's going to end up being exponent of one-third. So what that means is it's going to be the cube root of all this fun stuff. So that is the condensed form for that logarithm. One more example. Here's our last example. Uh, this time, as you can see, we've got three logarithms. One, two, three. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our exponents, I mean our coefficients, and write them as exponents. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and condense my logarithms. As I'm doing that, I need to know that I'm just going to end up with one log. It's log base b, so that's what I'm going to end up with. This has a positive coefficient, so that x to the fourth will end up in the numerator. This has a negative coefficient, and I'm actually going to go ahead and expand that right there. So 6 squared, we can do 36. Also has a negative exponent, and I know that this will give me the square root of y. So that's the condensed form for that logarithm.